What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. So what day is today? It is Monday. And what is Friday? The first day, well technically it's for TCG, but the first day of Orlando Regional. So this is pretty much the last big tournament before Orlando Regional. So I want to review the results of this tournament and talk about what we observe. This is a best of three tournament. It was very long. I competed in the first two rounds and then I had to drop so I could go help my mom clean out my room back home because I moved out a while ago. But we're going to go over the results, talk about it, and I'm going to give my opinions on what we can expect to see at Orlando based off of this. But before we do that, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. And that's my comment question of the day, which is, what do you expect to win Orlando? Let me know, and let's go ahead and get into this. Also, if you want some extra videos at the top of each week, I just recorded a team builder uh, for my Patreons where I built this really fun Iron Valiant Torkoal Trick Room team. If you are a YouTube member, Twitch subscriber, or Patreon member of $5, uh, you have access to that video, and you have all the information on the team. So yeah. I uh, just want to put that out there. Let's get into it. So the winner was JMO. I don't know how to pronounce the rest. JMO. Um, and they were using a very interesting team. We see Roaring Moon, Salazzle, Mimikyu, Iron Bundle, Amoongus, and King Gambit. Now, what's crazy about this team isn't even the fact that there's a Salazzle but rather how Salazzles run. Let me show you this real quick. This Salazzle, everything about this team is like pretty much normal, like nothing is like super out of the ordinary, but you'll notice that Iron Bundle is using the Focus Sash. It's not booster energy. So if the Focus Sash is there, what's the Salazzle using? And it is Eject Pack, and this has to be one of the coolest techs I've ever seen. No reason to run Corrosion because there's no poison moves on this guy, so Oblivious is quite good. It makes it so you can't be uh, intimidated, but and also makes you... Um, well, I, I said intimidated, but in my mind, I was like, it makes it so you can't be taunted, but also you can't be intimidated. That's like the, that's the secondary thing. So this Salazzle is running Overheat, Will-O-Wisp, Encore, Fake Out, and an Eject Pack. What does the Eject Pack do? It's a new item in Generation 8 that we very rarely saw in VGC. Um, but the thing is, Salazzle can reliably run this Eject Pack strategy because it can't be intimidated due to Oblivious. So Oblivious makes it so the Eject Pack will only really ever activate. Um, I guess Icy Wind and Snarl are also a way to activate it, but uh, with Salazzle, it'll only really ever activate after you go for Overheat. Effectively, turning your Overheat into a 130 base power fire type special U-turn. That is crazy. And Encore is obviously quite good for a few things. If you Encore um, a Pokemon into like a, I don't know, a fake out, then that makes this like a really reliable way of just shutting down anything really. So yeah, uh, this, this is really cool because there are a lot of options with this team. Like just right off the bat, uh, I want to point out that this Salazzle is able to, you know, go for Tailwind and then, or, you know, Tailwind, Roaring Moon, and then go for that huge super strong move uh, overheat into a Pokemon like Iron Hands or Iron Bundle and then get an immediate switch out into their Iron Bundle and take advantage of the Tailwind that way or even their Mimikyu if they want to do that. Um, but other uses for this is you can lead off with Salazzle and Mimikyu and then turn one you can actually go for like uh, either a fake out or maybe uh, just go for like the um, overheat and get in whatever you need to. Or if you're facing an opposing Trick Room team and you like you don't have taunt on this guy right you have like encore and their mimikyu doesn't even have taunt it's just like a straight up or not not trick room i meant to say trick room uh their mimikyu doesn't even have trick room right uh it's able to uh, versus opposing trick room teams go for a massive overheat into the pokemon that wants to go for trick room and switch out into like an amoongus or a king gambit to be able to operate under that trick room and amoongus itself like it has regenerator it can cycle in and out with this move that's like super cool. This is a really awesome tech. And I, I don't know, it's just, you, we don't really see that sort of thing uh, right now. So I, I'm really just dumbfounded that this won the tournament. Um, it's a really cool tech, you know, I, I there's not much I can say. The team's like solidly built. It's basically just like Roaring Moon, Salazzle, Mimikyu, Iron Bundle for like the fast mode. And then you have like Trick Room options for um, matchups where you don't think you'll be able to go for Trick Room or, you know, even like King Gambit is obviously like Defiant, so it's good in like Intimidate Mons, or uh, Amoongus is going to be able to support basically anything here. Obviously, you know, Roaring Moon Acrobatics is quite strong, but it doesn't want to go for uh, anything in front of like a Pokemon that can like burn it. So you can like 
just go ahead and rage pad away the burn. It's it's just like a really cool team. Like I really like this. So yeah, uh, let's let's go back to like the rest of the teams. I just want to point out that that's what won. Other things that we see in top cut, uh, we see this uh, Volcarona plus um, what's it called? Volcarona plus Annihilate team. It's basically just like standard. I think you know Volcarona is obviously going to be able to set up in front of things. Mouse hold plus Annihilate is like a, a tried and true combination. We do see Curse Mimic you, which is a really nice niche that it has for beating opposing Don Dozo. That's actually something that I've talked about in a previous video, and we'll actually see that another Curse Mimic you top cut and this team. Looks awfully familiar. Who made that team? We'll see in a minute. But yeah, Don Dozo is obviously quite good, so Curse Mimic you into it is going to be a solid answer. It makes it so Don Dozo takes a fourth of its health each turn, uh, which makes it so it doesn't want to go for substitutes or, or anything, because then it's going to be at half health, and that just takes more and more damage. Basically makes substitute a liability on those things. Uh, but yeah, we see Don Dozo did also top cut. It's basically just Don Dozo hyper offense. The way that we've sort of figured out uh, is the best way to run it. You run Don Dozo with like a Paw Mod, which is able to revive uh, it if it goes down, and then you can bring it back. Uh, but more importantly, it's going to be able to fake out support the Golden Go, which wants to pick up as many KOs as possible to make it so the Don Dozo is a win condition. Something else we notice is that Great Tusk is picking up in usage as a ground type Pokemon. Life Orb Great Tusk is probably a lot better than Booster Energy, just because it's Booster Energy with the Sun Boost. It only goes up right once when you switch out, it's gone. Life Orb is basically permanent, and they're the exact same multiplier. So we see Marco Fiero actually ran uh, Life Orb Great Tusk here, which it supports the team super well. Something that Don Dozo teams don't really like uh, is having to deal with uh, opposing like Miascarada and stuff. And with Talonflame here, you're able to go for Terra Steel if you need to like dodge a, a Flower Trick, and then close combat into Miascarada or other Pokemon that would generally deal with this thing. And obviously, Headlong Rush is just like one of the strongest moves ever. It's a ground type close combat. Uh, just general trends beyond that point. We see that Iron Hands Garganical is still quite good. Uh, we see that Trick Room Palafin stuff, not Trick Room Palafin, Iron Hands Palafin is also super, super good because Iron Hands Palafin allows you to go for like Volt Switches into it. I actually lost this person in my round one. Uh, but yeah, we see Volt Switches Palafin is like a very strong combo, especially when you have fake out Pokemon and like Intimidate Mons to cycle in and out. Something that I've noticed is just that these four Pokemon, Amoongus, Iron Hands, Arcanine, Palafin, they all work so well together synergistically, and those last two slots can be basically whatever you need them to be. Usually we see a Pelipper and then like a really fast special attacker, but for this team, Gothitelle is quite good. Uh, as far as Garganical goes, we know how it works. Garganical is the type of Pokemon that just wants to sit on the field forever. And uh, while this one's running Terra Ghost, sometimes we'll actually go ahead and see, uh, what is it called? Sometimes we'll see them run Terra Poison to be able to clear off Toxic Spikes for their teammates or even Terra Grass to make sure that uh, they don't have to deal with the usual weaknesses that a rock type would. Obviously, water moves are quite strong into this thing, but uh, going Poison allows you to avoid those fighting type moves from Iron Hands, which obviously Ghost is going to be able to do that too. And we see a similar thing. You know, we have Regenerator, Amoongus, Garganical, Iron Hands, Arcanine, and then like a water type. Like that's one of the strongest cores you can have. And Volt Switch is just probably the best move that you could ask for on a Mon like Iron Hands. If you don't know, despite the fact that Iron Hands has absolutely abysmal special attack, the Volt Switch is just insanely useful because for one, it's a fake out Pokemon. Uh, and two, it's it's U-turn. You're not. It's basically a U-turn. You're not going for damage with this thing, anyways. So the Volt Switch allows it to go for Fake Out Turn One, and then Volt Switch Out Turn Two, and get something in slowly. Iron Hands has enough bulk, especially with the Assault Vest and how people have been running it with like a ton of special defense, that it can basically eat any hit and then get in your frail Pokemon much easier. Notably, stuff like Iron Bundle, which is really really frail on the on the special side. So getting it in slowly instead of um, having to risk, you know, messing up your Focus Sash or just taking any type of damage from uh, any move and then sending you in range of priority moves like Sucker Punch or even Jet Punch at times is just really useful. Being able to avoid that, I mean. Other things I notice, something I just want to point out is we do see a few Gastrodon. I made a video talking about Gastrodon the other day and why I think it's like super good. We see that this is a Choice Specs Gastrodon. The reason I said it was like super good is that it's like solid into Iron Hands, uh, Arcanine, Golden Go and especially uh, Garganical if you use the right set. I think Choice Specs is still like a really good Garganical answer because it doesn't have to deal with um, Salt Cure too long if you just two shot things. This other one, is this the same one? That's the same one, my bad. <laughs> Where's the other one? Um, here it is. 
This other one, we do see Covert Cloak. I was actually speaking praises about Covert Cloak specifically because of the uh, way that it can switch in on Snarls, Icy Winds, Spirit Breaks, and have no secondary damage or secondary effects on it, but also the fact that it can just absolutely annihilate Garganical by the fact it can recover off anything it does to it and two-shot it with Earth Power or, you know, go for, like, the, the long game with Muddy Water. It's such a reliable Pokemon. And, yeah, speaking of Covert Cloak users and calls that I got right. Um, I actually don't believe in Iron Thorns, but this is my team. Only Alpha got 14th place. I believe that's top cut. I think it's top 32 top cut or top 16, one or the other. Uh, but we see that this person is apparently a fan of the channel and they top cut with my team. Uh, this is my booster energy team that I ran last week. No, the week before. Uh, it's booster energy roaring moon with like max speed, max uh, attack, just standard set. Uh, but you see, we're actually running Trick Room Mimikyu as like a secondary Trick Room option because we have a Sylveon and we have like a Rocky Helmet Amoongus. Uh, and also Iron Thorns isn't like super fast, so you have the Trick Room option for that. But mainly it's got Curse to deal with opposing Dondozo. And we're also running a Covert Cloak Arcanine because of the matchup that it has into Iron Hands. It makes it so you can lead off into Iron Hands and basically guarantee a burn barring them running Misty Terrain or um, what's it called? Or... Um, Terra Fire, like you basically always get that burn, and also non-fake outable snarls are super good. And you can't be snarled yourself, so your heat waves are doing consistent damage. But the coolest part of all is the loaded dice Terra Grass Iron Thorns. You can go you can go Terra Bug for similar resistances, but the Terra Grass makes it so Amoongus is just helpless in front of you and you get free swords dances. I really liked this team and I had a lot of fun piloting it, and I'm just really glad that someone managed to top cut with it. So uh after you know gushing about me getting calls right and, and my own team, I think we can talk about just what I expect to see at Orlando and what I think is going to do quite good. So what we notice is top cutting series two tournaments consistently are Roaring Moon Hyper Offense, uh, Trick Room Hyper Offense is like another option. Garganical Balance is one of the best ones. I believe it won the first series two tournament and it's consistently top cutting. Uh, what else did I notice? Uh, Rain plus Iron Hands is super good and obviously just the Iron Hands Arcanine, Amoongus, and Water-type core is just super, super good. Actually, if we had to come up with a name for that core, what would it be? Let me think. Iron Hands, Arcanine, Amoongus. So it's A, A, I, W for water. I guess we can go like Palafin. Palafin, so what would it be? It would be, um, oh wait, Arcanine. <laughs> Ayapa? What do you think? I, Abba. I, I, I guess it'd be I, I, Abba. I don't know. That, that's like a berry, isn't it? Isn't I, a Papa berries like anything? I, a Papa. Yeah, I mean, I, Abba. We can call it I, a Papa. Why not call it I, a Papa? <laughs> the I, a Papa core, because it's Iron Hands, Amoongus, Palafin, Arcanine. Like, that's consistently doing well. Okay, we're going to go with I, a Papa. <laughs> Wait, is there another P Pokemon we can use there? Let me, let me think. Let me think. We can just make an Ayapapa team. Sorry, this is completely off track. Pelipper? Oh, wait. Wait, is this happening? Another A Pokemon? Another A Pokemon? Okay. There's not really, like, a great A Pokemon here. Armor Rouge, maybe? I don't know. That, that's, like, that's that's TBD. That's TBD. Annihilate. Okay. We got the Ayapapa core. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that, that's doing consistently pretty well. Fluttermane, surprisingly, isn't as great as I thought it would be going into the series. I thought it would fall off because of the way that we knew how to deal with it, but I still thought it would be, like, top cutting consistently. Uh, we do see a few in top cut, but it's not, like, in top four. It is in top eight, but it's, like, seventh, and then we don't see it again. So, yeah, uh, I just want to say, like, as far as Orlando goes, I'd say the best things that you would want to look out for are Roaring Moon Hyper Offense with just a bunch of fast mons. I guess Roaring Moon plus Iron Bundle is, like, one of the best ones. Uh, you want to watch out for Don Dozo plus Tailwind Hyper Offense. That's obviously quite good, and we've known that's been good for a long time. Cycling sort of teams with Iron Hands, Arcanine, and Amoongus and a water type, but obviously if they slap on a Garganical, that makes it even more difficult to deal with. And I would say above all, make sure you're just ready for Iron Hands and even Gastron. I think Gastron deals with so many things in this format that we need to make sure we have like actual grass types. I would even recommend maybe running Leaf Storm on your Amoongus if you're willing to get rid of um, the support move or maybe protect or something. I think that just having that option is actually really solid or just like a grass move on anything just to deal with this thing because it is very solid with that Terra Fire plus Storm Drain. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Uh, not like a super long-winded video. I just want to talk about this really quick. But if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. 
Have a nice one. Bye.